Who are we starting with? Uh, let's go Josh Jacobs first, since he's he's the leader in the clubhouse um, as far as all these guys go. Although Miles is 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 trying to make a case here uh, late. Um, so Josh mm-hmm. Jacobs right now is 13 games. Um, he's played. He's PFF's number one rated running back at the score of 93.0. Ooh. He's the RB2, 282.8 points, 21.8 points per game. Um, now he will be 25, I believe, in February. So still young mm. enough. And, you know, I know a lot was has been made of the 27-year-olds not really getting to that threshold of RB1 seasons. But it seems like this year we're having a little bit of a resurgence of some of the older running backs maybe being able to show that you could hold value for an extra year or two and maybe be a little less scared. Um, so we'll see how that factors in. Um, but, you know, 262, 268 attempts for Josh Jacobs, 1,400 yards. That's good for number one. Um, his yards per attempt are 5.2. That's tied for sixth. TDs, uh, 11, tied for third. Targets, 50, tied for – or that's good for eighth. Catches, 44, good for seventh. Um, elusive rating um, is 100.7. That's a PFF stat. Oh, um, so, you know, just – just really putting up a lot of good numbers. Second in yards after contact with uh, 1,004. Uh, fifth in yards per contact per attempt, 3.73. Uh, 79 missed tackles forced. That's good for number one. Um, runs of 10 or more, of 10 yards or more, 36. That's good for 11th. And design runs of 15 or more, uh, 14. That's tied for fourth. So a lot of upper echelon. Straight facts. Um, Straight facts. He's good. A lot of upper echelon uh, numbers there for Josh Jacobs. Do we care? And how are we how are we feeling about Josh Jacobs right now? JB, I'll, I'll open it up to our guest. Yeah, I mean, all, all that stuff is fantastic. And, you know, from past uh, guest appearances by myself, I love a running back that's going to be involved in the passing game. And 44 receptions off of 50 targets had, what, 54 receptions last year. He has shown that he can be a guy that you can rely on and not just give you work between the tackles and running the ball, but also through the air. And the big thing for him coming into this season, we had the concern. I say we, the dynasty community, we had the concern on on whether or not, you know, was he going to be extended since they didn't exercise the fifth year option? Well, you have uh, McDaniels coming in. How is that going to impact the way they use the running backs? And then you guys remember the Hall of Fame game, right? Yeah. Oh, dude's, play, dude's playing well into the second half. Alert the media. Nobody <laughs> wants anything to do with Josh Jacobs. So he comes out. He's putting up a fantastic year. And from a short-term perspective, he's somebody that if you have on your roster, you're probably in good shape at the running back position. Hopefully you have a little bit more depth. But – he has climbed for me. He was probably in that 20-ish range preseason. And when I say 20-ish, I mean uh, in, in my tears looking at the dynasty running back landscape. But at this point now, you got to have him up there with even like Swift, Mixon, uh, Nick Chubb, Eckler, even Saquon Barkley. Like I know you guys wanted to talk about Jacobs, Sanders, Montgomery, but Get looking at in. contract years – Barkley's in there too. And there's a very realistic chance that Jacobs ends up being a a more highly sought after free agent running back than even Saquon Barkley. You know, I I think he's been a little bit more durable and the, the, the upside is certainly there. My concern here, well, it's twofold one from a short term perspective. And that's really what we're looking at with running backs, maybe a one, two, your window, anything beyond that is is kind of silly with how quickly things change. But with Josh Jacobs, the end of season schedule is not doing him any favors. They have one of the most challenging playoff schedules in terms of def- defensive rush efficiency. And that's always a mouthful for me to say. But then, of course, all of these guys that we talk about tonight, there is going to be that discussion in the back of people's heads. Well, He's not under contract. What's going to happen? And I think the whole dynamic with the running back landscape right now is interesting because you have really solid running backs. And like Casey started uh, off the show with saying, well, these were running backs that were supposed to come in and possibly change the landscape. And, you know, they haven't really, uh, for one reason or another, really got up into that upper echelon. But Jacob's probably, he's the one that's right there. So where is he going to land? 
Who knows? Does he stay in Vegas? Possibly. But it's going to be an interesting dynamic with the 23 rookies coming in and all of these free agent running backs that uh, one of the best free agent running back classes we've seen in quite some time. It's going to be an interesting dynamic with these guys. Do they get contracts in free agency? And as a result, not, you know, it knocks some teams out of the running for these running backs in the 23 rookie class, or do teams kind of play it slow and hold off? Well, you know, we have, you know, I, I know offhand because I was talking about this earlier, the Broncos have two early third round picks. Do they bring in a free agent running back to help out with Javante Williams coming off of an injury or, Hey, let, let's get a running back on a rookie deal. And it kind of deflates this free agent class in terms of the, the earning potential. So it's going to be really interesting like that, that March through end of April time period. It's going to be so exciting here in the dynasty landscape. Yeah, it'll it'll will certainly be interesting to see the the bag, as the kids say, that Jacobs uh, will be obtaining. Um, come from oh, and really case case really quick. I'm, I don't even think I answered a question there. That's okay. I was just so excited. I was just so excited to talk to you guys tonight. But to put a price on it, I I would move a a late twenty three first. I'm contending. I would still move that for Josh Jacobs today. I don't think All that's right? getting it done, right? Well, he, so here, here's my thing. I, there's a very good chance it doesn't. But if you see a team that may be there in the quarterfinals and there's no trade deadline and they go out in that first round, well, they, they have no future draft capital, kind of an aging team. They were thinking about kickstarting a rebuild, but they want to make one last push. Maybe there's potential, hey, fire sale. Let's get younger going into the offseason because it didn't play out as I planned. Uh, but yeah, I there's a very realistic chance. I think you're not going to get that done. So I would go even up to, uh, you know, it's even if I don't get a buy in the playoffs, so I'm not one of those top two teams necessarily, I still would be interested in moving my 23 first. I think some pivot opportunities, maybe I would move mix in. See that Jacobs is so hot right now. He's so hot. Like he, so he's so hot, hot right now. Ansel, Ansel. so hot right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, uh, Fucking love you know, I, I think you, you'd have to craft something here, and it would really depend on your your potential trade partner of who has Josh Jacobs. Now, if I'm not contending, I would move Jacobs for, you know, hopefully you guys have extra first round picks, so it's not yours because you're contending. I can get into that 104 to 106 range, which is a little pricey, but you're looking to make a push. So you're like, hey, I have an extra first round pick. Let's see what we can do. So it's like sell for a mid first, buy for a late first, and then add some additional pieces uh, and, and pick up the margins there and and try to get something done. So you're not giving up the mid first. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> Based on just you, I, how much of this class that you, that you like. Yeah, because if if so, here's my thing: it, Stroud and Young. At the quarterback position, they're going to be we're assuming super flex you're, when, when you're talking these values. Are we? I didn't, I didn't realize I was jumping on here with dinosaurs playing. Well, one I'm just well, he, cause he, I'm just explaining it to the audience. But no, guess. no, I'm messing around. Uh, yeah, super flex or two quarterback, and then let's say tight end premium because then we'll get Michael Mayer sure. in there towards the middle to end get of the as first much value round. as we can get going around here. That's what I want to see. You know, that's what I want. Yeah, yeah. let's do start trading, ten linemen again. while we're at it. Uh, but so we have Stroud and Young up there, and then I'm hoping uh, Levis and, and uh, uh, Richardson get that first run draft capital because I'm out on them. So I Ooh. hope they get first run draft capital because in that case, it's going to push some talent down to that 108, 109, 110 area. So if I made the playoffs, I can get a nice piece there that I'm looking at right now. My top eight is kind of it's similar to last year. My top eight, there's a, a drop after that. But anyway, back to. Uh, what I was saying there was Stroud and Young. You have Bijan at 101. And then for me, that 104 to 106, I I'm taking my top two receivers there over Josh Jacobs in a one-for-one -one swap. And then we're talking about Jameer Gibbs and Sean Tucker right there. And you're giving me guys that I think are going to get solid enough draft capital. I love the collegiate profiles. And you're giving me that reset on three, four years and – uh, entering year one of a rookie deal. So, yeah, I, I would not be comfortable moving the up to 106 for him right now and him being Josh Jacobs. So we're getting the 107. So he is him. 
<laughs> is what you're saying. Um, I, I hate that. Is that like a worst. thing now? I hate worst. it. I haven't heard that. I'm, I'm glad I hadn't heard that. <laughs> hey, you, got a, so you, got a, you got a second kid right now. You're, you're just... <laughs> You know. It's so stupid. It's real terrible. He is um, him. You, know, you, you haven't seen the lady, the video lady. You are not him. She's pointing up, and then they just cut to something else. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, she's that. Yeah, yeah. she's <laughs> us. Um. <laughs> all right. So you you mentioned some other running backs there. Um. I'm 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 if I'm if I'm in the middle of a playoff run here, I'm, I'm okay. I, I probably wouldn't go top top notch, but if if I, I'm fine with middle of the pack, one six ish even super flex to, to get josh jacobs because i'm a that, that's if i think i've got another year of run in, in in me here to be at the upper echelon of things because i'm guaranteeing myself a guy who really has been good and just kind of been slept on a little bit i believe if he finishes in the top uh of, of where he's at right now he's obviously two it would take a lot to slip all the way out of being an rb1 he's rb2 he's the he's the number eighth player overall I, I, I ppr think, scoring i think he's been, i think this will event be very close to like his third rb1 season in the amount of seasons that he's been in the league which is four so far um i think that's pretty solid and regardless of where he goes he kind of can do a little bit of everything and and you know has been very productive throughout it would seem like maybe I, I don't exactly and know what's going to happen. And playing banged up, right, right, yeah. and you, right. not you just mentioned, playing through injury and just and, and almost getting de- detracted for that because you're not performing. He's still fucking balling, right? You, know? you you mentioned a little more durable than than Saquon. You know, just has really avoided the big time injuries, um, and but stays a little nicked, but always plays. I did, I did knock on wood over here with yeah. that comment, right? Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Um, so in in November, DLF ADP, which is usually a little behind, had him at RB sixteen. Um, and so some of the guys around him, non RB wise, well, even RB wise, uh, Najee Harris, uh, give me Jacobs, Jacobs over Harris. And they're not, they're really pretty much the same age. Um, they're really not all that different in age. Um, so I think I was a month older or younger. I could, I could really? lean. The only thing is that you kind of know that if there could be an offensive line there, that the Steelers don't mind leaning on Najee to give him enough run and we're a little uncertain about Jacobs but I, I I like everything we've seen of Jacobs um how about Ramondre Jacobs yeah Jacobs over Ramondre why is that uh I would be very surprised you know Damien Harris he's on a contract year I'd be very surprised if the Patriots don't bring somebody in to not necessarily compete but at least compliment Ramondre and he it's a here situation strong, finishes strong here and maybe he just I, becomes the 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 other the rb killer you know both or, of them eating kevin each other Har- cannibal Ke- kevin harris yeah. looked kevin decent harris, sure. yep. uh so uh, you know that's my concern and of course it, it's like one of those off-season narratives does it come to fruition we'll see but also uh, J- I mean jacobs and ramondre they're both 24 years old you know, and I think one thing to think about with all these running backs, yeah, it's a, it's scary in terms of, and I act like we're talking about something serious here. Oh my God, it's so scary. <laughs> it's so terrifying. You know, it's scary where these running backs are going to go, but we have like 10 good free agent running backs. They're not all going to just be dead after this year. Right, right. You know, so I think that's something to keep in mind. And when we hit the off season, we're no longer, uh, keeping track of wins and losses. I think with that level of uncertainty with a lot of these running backs, that's going to be the time that you can go out and get a major discount. You know, even if you were a contending team, Hey, I want to, I want to get out ahead of, of, of getting stuck with Josh Jacobs when he ends up in a, you know, crummy situation. Well, okay. Let me, let me alleviate those concerns. Let me take him off your hands. So, uh, before, I was doing this, uh, gathering the DLF information. December actually came out right when I went. So he is, he is RB 11, um, for the December ADP for DLF. Um, would you go, uh, Cooper cup or, uh, Josh Jacobs? Oh man, I'll go Josh Jacobs because there is a real level of concern for me with the retirement of Matthew Stafford. I think that is a very real possibility, you know, the the multiple concussion protocol and back to back weeks, uh, you have the spinal cord contusion, and I, I know this I is going to come across. As, 
What'd you say? Nothing. Just a Mike Tyson <laughs> quote. Oh, um, and, and I know this is going to come across as like kind of jokey, but uh, kind of serious. Uh, Matthew Stafford has a very vocal and opinionated wife. Who's also and, been through a lot. Yeah. 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 The, the, the brain tumor. Yeah. The, the, you know, so he, he won his Super Bowl. He's made his money. Ton of money. Go spend time with your family. I think that. And then who's to say McVeigh? He might be in the broadcasting, but you look at that team. This is a, a prime example of a <laughs> dynasty manager. That's a Rams that fan. Pushed all, he pushed all his chips in, and now he's saying, I'm going to orphan this team. Yeah. Hey, good luck, guys. I'm cutting back on leagues this year. Good luck. I feel like you might get one more ride out of it, but that's not probably not enough for me to stick with. I didn't mean to upset anyone there. I'm no. sorry. You're upsetting sorry. me. <laughs> you guys were brothering the last time you were on the show. Now. Shit. <laughs> Times change. Yeah. This is not 2008 Rams. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. You got Baker anymore. Mayfield. There's nothing to be upset Fuck about. Fuck Baker. <laughs> I agree. It seems to also be the sentiment right now that that is kind of swirling. McVay was kind of leaving a, a, a kind of a small window here when – Stafford Cup, Donald kind of leave. He might go to the booth for a little while. Well, take I a would break, that kind of money. And then maybe eventually mm -hmm. come back um, but um, and get a little break. Maybe he was start starting a family kind of deal. Um, so Like a, a Sean, Sean Payton situation. He's already talking about. Right. I think that was coming back. Trying I mean, to get out of that situation. Or, 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 or the Gruden route. Just yeah. don't call the commissioner a pussy. Right. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Let's go. Let's go. One or two more guys. Um the jump up here has me a little rattled because I had a little sorted a different way. Um, how about, let's see, you said Cooper Cup over him. Drake London. They'll get a young No, guy. no, I, I would take Josh Jacobs over Cooper Cup. That's what, that's what, I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Josh Jacobs over um, Cooper Cup. Let's move up a little bit. Drake London, young guy, you know, good, good market share. Uh, but oh, not necessarily, I know. you know, turning <laughs> in. Oh, I know. <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> turning into. <laughs> fantasy production per se but it's a low threshold over there right now i league dynamic i think would dictate this a little bit it, it, you know if you're in your league and you're familiar with it and you're in a situation where you know the market is a little stingier on running backs and there's certainly leagues like that i, I think i i think i lean jacobs but that's also if I'm a high level contender and I like my chances already, you know, looking out one or even two years, but there's a lot of scenarios. I would take Drake London. Yeah. I, I would say 60, 40 split. I lean London. I think that's fair. I like, I like the contextual, uh, cause you know, we're obviously playing this game to kind of figure out the value, but there is a whole lot of nuance in, in all of this. And I think mm -hmm. that's a fair, that's, a, that's probably about where, where I would be. Um, on that, and I think I agree with you, with pretty much all of the rest of those. Uh, let's, and now, yeah. now Ritter steps in, right? For we don't Atlanta, know what's about to happen? Maybe we open it up a little bit. Probably not, but maybe they want to see what they have. Um, I, mean, I, I, would I think that's it. They didn't. Um, maybe they were trying to hold on tight and play it a little more conservative to try to maybe make the playoffs because the division's bad, and now it's it's out, and, and apparently Marcus Mariota's out. Um, I think the worst thing for Drake London would be if Desmond Ritter comes in. They they're, they win games, and they're not necessarily throwing the ball any more than they were with Marcus Mariota. Because then they're thinking, <laughs> yeah, well, right. maybe we can rely on Ritter at least for twenty three. Go in with the same uh, approach, and then you have Kyle Pitts coming back. You have Drake London. Who knows if they draft a higher end receiver? And now that pie it's getting split up a little bit more. So yeah. and and that's a small pie to begin with. Right. I mean, right. you've got Tyler Algier. What more do you need? I. That's true. That's true. How about uh, we're talking super flex here. Kyler Murray just got injured. Would you trade Kyler Murray for Josh Jacobs? Or is that too far? No, no. I, I would take Kyler Murray. But again, I'm thinking about specific leagues that I have Josh Jacobs. Uh, one very specific league. I have a first round buy. Uh, it's a nice prize pull. I'm not going to lie. I'm trying to win that money. Mm. Uh what a novel Trading. idea. I know, I know. Uh, winning. Wow, so trying to nobody, win. Nobody, what nobody in the know? dynasty space ever wants to win. Uh -huh. I don't know. It's always about How just... much money do you get for having four first next year? <laughs> uh, pr pride and enjoyment. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Uh so there I would be very hesitant in those situations. But again, if I had to give it a split situation, if I'm not in 
a great situation. Like once we hit off season mode, I would take Kyler in every spot. You know, I, I know there, yeah. there is certainly a level of concern and a level of concern. That's like my, uh, you know, drink phrase tonight. Yeah, all right. That's good. Uh, I'm concerned about everything, guys. I'm concerned about everything. But with Kyler Murray, it's concerning you know, times. It's concerning. He's a rushing quarterback, torn ACL in December. Let's say it's a nine to twelve month. Uh, it's a weird return vibe to play. in general, too. And you know, he's just going to attack yeah. that rehab yeah. with you know everything he's got. Too, Bigger, you know? and he's not going to be playing any video games, guys. Yeah. You know, they could be a hand killer, but not be a video game. <laughs> <laughs> so he he, we might be able to write off most of twenty three for Kyler Murray oh. as well. Yeah. Like really, I, I mean, at least half of it to be back to maybe <laughs> mm-hmm. where we were comfortable scoring the fantasy points that you get with the rushing quarterback which is another discussion for another time we all love the rushing quarterbacks but Mm -hmm. right now it is kind of you know you like them you kind of need them and in in dynasty super flex or whatever but right now there's a lot of nicked up banged up uh you know running quarterbacks who are getting themselves in a little bit of trouble who aren't helping you out even though even though they're so great but we'll, we'll we'll take that for for another time who 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 ahead of schedule isn't something you're gonna hear with Kyler Murray's (laughs) rehab who was uh no. who was your uh wide receiver rookie wide receiver one uh coming into this year? Was it Drake or where Garrett it, Wilson? It, it, it was Drake okay. London okay. and then and then I had Traylon Burks. I took okay. him in so, our okay, mock so draft. Burks. But so Burks or or Josh Jacobs. Jacobs. Uh it's gonna be the same exact answer okay. as London, okay. honestly. Right. I had I him in the same tier. Okay. All right. I like what I've seen from Burks. I really yeah, do. It's been a nice resurgence here. Um, How could you not? Except for that fucking hit hit yeah oh my god hey he held on to that he like, did sure if did. I, it's because he locked get, up i think <laughs> rigor, I more, th- rigor mortis yeah, I, think he, I think he locked up if i get hit like that i don't not even like that if i get hit at all call the call the uh the cemetery get my plot lined up i'm dead <laughs> yeah. dig me I'm up done. call my friends i'm definitely done playing football yeah yeah like yeah that was uh, like so, there's so many big hits this year, man. Like mm. stop injuring our dudes. Oh, right now well, going into these fucking, playoffs is, if a, they, is a nightmare. If they throw the fucking guy out, they, they're talking like about, they do in fucking they're, college. They're talking about doing. That. They don't give a fuck about these fines. Throw the fucking guy out. So, so, so I, the only I want to I just want to argue the college thing drains me because there needs to be at least and I know it's hard to judge intent, but it, you mm-hmm. can kind of almost tell it. Some of the times in the college thing. It's like ah, I I don't know, and they can really be huge. So I don't want to necessarily go Clemson down that lot. down that road. Here we but go. but and I'm still begging for it to happen. You know, I, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. That's anyway. Let's keep it. moving. You got to err on the side of caution. You get you got all these guys getting knocked the fuck nah. out. You got to you got to discourage it. You're trying to act like you're discouraging it. Kick these dudes out of the fucking game. If it's and if I don't mind these defensive backs getting kicked out. Because then you got to bring the backups in, yeah. and then we might get more fantasy points. <laughs> you got, you got to. It's got to be the intent, and 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 was it was it aggressive? Like I don't know that that was that hit was necess- Like they're just trying to make a fucking play there on that one. I don't know if you could. I'm not comfortable throw. There there are certain times where you're like, one that guy is a known asshole, and two he's clearly fucking head hunting or doing right. some bullshit right. here instead of what he could be doing. Who was it? Was it um, CD Deuce? I, I I don't I don't remember who. I'm I'm okay. saying I'm not. I don't think. That that was the intention okay. on that play, because because um, because he's a known head hunter, and I think that was the Eagles game, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. I believe so. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 if I recall correctly, like I didn't think it was a terribly dirty uh, hit. Egregious. Yeah, it was just kind of. Yeah, sick. like Tannehill threw it threw it over there, and there was two guys, and he he got yeah. Popped. Uh, yeah. All right, let's keep it moving here in the in the order of time, so we can at least get through three guys. No chance we're getting through more than that. 